Today we're going to talk about hiring people. New format. Let me know how you like it. When should you hire someone for your business? That's a very important, that's a very enduring, and that's a very critical question. To answer that question, I'm going to talk about what happened to me end of 2017 going into 2018. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we talk about is how to get money, how to protect money, how to stack money, how to invest money, and a little passive income. All through hustling and starting a business, entrepreneurship. That's what we do. Go below and check out a special. And there's a new email list that I'm creating for a new product, which I'll talk about a little later. And I'm going to link a post that I answered on Quorum. And a lot of people didn't like this post. They really didn't because most people have an employee mindset. And most of the responses were from people who were employees or business owners who still had an employee mindset. I had some people working for me. They weren't bad people. Let's be really clear about that but they weren't fully invested the way that I wanted them to be. And your first question is, is your business? Why should they be invested? Because as my business do, does well, so will they. That's why they need to be invested. If they see it as just a job, they're always going to try to escape. They're always going to be looking at a bigger and better opportunity, which means that while they should be working for me, they're actually going to be thinking about getting another job while I'm paying them. That's a problem. So I had some clients last year and I hired the staff for those projects. The clients went away and I assumed correctly that I couldn't retrain these people because what would have happened is I would have given them additional responsibilities and they would have wanted more money. People were making anywhere from 35,000 a year up to $50,000 a year, 50,000. And I had four people make it 50,000. That's 200 K a year. I looked at it. And I realized that I wanted to make a shift. And I also realized this recession was coming. If you look through the videos, you'll see I've been talking about this all year because I knew it was coming. I saw all the storm clouds. So I had these employees who were not well suited for the next thing. So essentially I got rid of everyone. And that may seem cold hearted. It may seem brutal, but as a business owner, your first responsibility, your first priority, is to your business. That's where it all stems. And I looked at it and I realized that what I had hired wasn't going to work for the new thing. So rule number one, when you hire someone for a specific job and they do not show an exceptional attitude, don't think you can retrain them. You can't. So I got rid of everybody in all year. I've been thinking about hiring people because for me, it takes interviewing, 20 to 50 people to find one person. Those are my numbers. Many employers get tired of the interviewing process. They get tired of the stuff and they just go ahead and pull the trigger on the turd. I took my time and I set up some protocols and I've got myself two really good employees. Now, part of the deal is you got to find the right personality mix and you got to find the right amount of hustle and you've got to find people who will go for the long ball, people who will lay out because there are people all over society like this. And then you have a group of folks, which this recession is going to expose, who think that their value to the organization is much greater than it is. Kind of like chicks on Tinder, Bumble, because they get so many opportunities online, they feel that they are more special than they are. And this is what many employees do. They feel that they're very special. It's a competitive marketplace. They can leave one job on Tuesday, have another job by Tuesday afternoon. So they're acting buck wild. This recession is going to take care of that. And one thing with this recession, there are many jobs that will disappear and they're never coming back. Right now you have elderly people in trucks driving to make money, 85 years old, behind of a wheel of a truck and the trucking companies took him because they couldn't get enough bodies. We're going to see a big, big shift in how employees work in the future because during this recession, companies have fat profits. It's been so good for so long. Companies have big bank accounts 
and what they're going to invest heavily into is automation and technology. This is why these jobs are going to disappear. If you are an employer, step two is you need to do the job first. There's this book called Rework, R-E, Work, and it talks about this. So this whole year, I've been doing certain jobs by myself so I know how to hire and train these people. Because until you do this one thing, you actually do the job, you're not gonna know what the job entails and it's gonna be very easy for your employees to play you. It's gonna be very easy because you don't know the job, you don't know the lay of the land, you don't know the protocols. They could literally be sitting at a desk all day collecting a check and not working for you. I'm just speaking facts. With hiring people, you gotta do it if you wanna grow. You can only go so far with technology. Even um, YouTubers like Ty Lopez, Facebook people, they have teams of five to 20 people. You know, you can make millions of dollars with a three to five person team, but you still need people and you need people who are vetted. You need people who are committed. And also none of this equity stuff where, you know, you get a piece of the company. That is one of the worst things you can do because to give someone a piece of a company that you built, that you invested your life, that you made sacrifices, and all they did is come in and offer just a pretty face, a little work, a little assistance, compared to what you've done, they've done nothing. And this is something else too, and I also put this post on my Facebook page. You're the leader, act like it. And this is why I love Asian philosophy. The Kung Fu master is the Kung Fu master, not because of positional leadership, the Kung Fu master is the master because he can beat up everybody in the dojo. That's why he's the master. So if you are an employer and you are suffering all kinds of slings and arrows and people are clowning you, people are stealing time, lean out, fire them and lean out. Reduce the size of your company to a point that you can manage it and then start doing what I've been doing. Start doing the work yourself, start writing up job descriptions. I've been doing this for months to prepare for the next round of hires because I knew that I was gonna need certain people and I also knew a recession was coming. Talent is gonna be so cheap because this is what's gonna happen. Right now, people can quit jobs and find other jobs, right? It's gonna be like, bam, it's gonna be just that sudden that they're like, whoa, I can't find a job, I quit this job. It's not gonna be predictable. It's not gonna be a gradual slowdown. It's gonna be very abrupt and it's gonna be very fast. And a lot of these yard birds are gonna get caught off guard. So this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to get the best of the best for the least amount. Because as a business owner, you're diametrically opposed to the employee. They're trying to get paid the most money for the least amount of work you're trying to get the most work for the least amount of money. So there's already this battle going on. And by becoming the dojo, the dojo Kung Fu master, where you can run your business and really push and automate as much as possible, you can win because when you're interviewing somebody, you're gonna interview with the confidence of someone who's done that job. You could like, well, what about this? Well, you know, and you'll know if they are a perfect fit. You will know if they are um, compatible to the company. You will know because you've been there. And this is the one thing that many business owners don't do. They'll put off hiring to someone else, which I have done. And it not necessarily became super bad, but these people were not like what they do at the BMW factory in Greenville, South Carolina. Each person is trained to work on three to four different lines. So if we need more people over here on the A line, they can go over here and do it. They're trained for it and they expect it. So they don't like, hey, you know, I got this additional duty, man. So I need some more money. Doesn't work like that because they're trained appropriately. And the way that I'm bringing people in my organization is that way because um, first of all, if you can get away with it, sometimes you can't, you want to hire them on a temporary basis or per job basis. Do not make a full time commitment to someone who has half as commitment to you. Don't do it because they will play you. So what I'm saying is you gotta be the, you gotta be that Kung Fu master. You gotta be the dojo master. You've gotta be able to lean out and 
do everything in your business, which you're going to take a hit. I took a hit, but fortunately when things were good, I had a fat savings account. If you're a business owner and you don't have a fat savings account, you are flirting with fire. Also, another thing about hiring is you will know when to hire when you do the job. And also, what do we pay these people? There's this uh, glass door and all of these uh, places where people should be making. Typically, what I found out is they give the higher ranges of the salary because I'll go to the glass door and someone I know who has a job and ask them what they're making. And they're always making 10 to 15 percent less than what glass door recommends. Very interesting how that works out. But bring them on as a temporary employee, temporary contractor. Either they're an independent contractor or they're a part time employee, 20 hours. And what you do is you hire two people for one job. Once again, you hire two people for one job. This way, they know they got some competition. They know that they like, whoa, because you both are competing. And this is something that happened at the Gallup organization. They used to put the top performers together in cubes because you hear that this guy over here is like, he's made 14 calls. I got a dial. I got to get me 14 calls because the environment, it creates an environment of competitiveness, which pushes you to perform better. So this is what you have to do in your business when you're hiring yard birds, because if you hire someone and they feel they got the job and they feel that they're okay, they're not going to work as hard as they can. Or if you want to be really slick, hire three people for the same job, let them know it's like the best person wins. This right here is going to freak some people out. Employee minded people are very funny. If the situation is where they have the advantage, they're like, hey, you know, that's the way it is. Don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Right. But when the advantage switches from them to the employer, all oh, these employers, they're bad people. Oh, my God, they're horrible. Uh, you know, I quit. They walk me to the door. It's very interesting. And this is why, based upon some of my uh, Facebook friends, when I see certain comments, I know how big their business is going to get. I know exactly how big their business is going to get because they have a mental block of the best of how they shouldn't treat employees. And they see themselves as an employee, even though they're the owner of the business. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm just like, OK, OK. So in parting, you hire after you have thoroughly vetted out the position. Once you know the ins and outs of that position and, and depending upon your organization, this could take you a year or two. And also something else, too, before I part. When you are hiring people for a long term business, you can make better offers. If you're hiring for short term profitability or you want people to do amazing things in a very short period of time, you're going to compromise the long term growth of your business because the people that I'm hiring, I'm hiring for the next 20 years. Uh, you, you have so much flexibility. And once again, you don't have to give up equity. Be very careful about distributing equity to people who are working per hour. That doesn't make sense. But you can say, look, you do this and this, I'll do this. And also realize that employees want cash money. They don't want stock, stock options. They want, if I do these things, I get X amount of money. And you keep it like that, you're going to keep your employees. Because, yeah, they want to be appreciated. Yes, they want to be respected, and you should do that. But more importantly, everybody wants the most money possible from their job. And if you could create a situation where you create a profitable business, uh, there was this oil gas company in Texas that gave its employees these super wonderful bonuses. And I remember the secretary, because she got a bonus of like 100K. And the last bonus was five years prior to that. I want you to think about this. She'd been waiting on the second bonus for five years. All you got to do is bless them once and they, they become locked in because there are so many companies out here that don't know how to build an employee process, don't know how to train people, uh, wear people out. And there are some companies that do abuse people. So if you hire appropriately by one doing the job, so you know what it entails. Then you hire the right personality. 
You can have someone that can literally be with you their whole working career. Seriously, you can. All right, so if you have any questions or anything, put them in the comments and understand I've got something new that's about to happen. It's gonna be something wonderful because I'm gonna give you what you need. Uh, there are some people who consider my content redundant, but they've not taken action on any of it. They're waiting for this mythical, majestical moment where they can get something and they don't have to work that hard. Once again, going back to the Kung Fu master, when you become the Kung Fu master, when you can fire everyone and you can still run your company profitably, you become so powerful. You become like, oh, you want to act like a fool? Goodbye. But when you are lazy and you're actually overpaying people because you don't want to do the right thing, you are sacrificing the long-term profitability of your company because you're lazy. So pick your poison, if you will. Below, I have a special offer that will expire Sunday because there's a lot of things that are coming. I'm very, very excited and we're about to rock and roll. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.